The new Volkswagen Arteon is in a weird place. It's not quite an Audi A5, but not quite Honda Accord. With that being said, the Arteon's compromise between luxury and mainstream makes it a rather special package. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel so I can take this to the next level. Thank you. Now back to the review. The new Volkswagen Arteon looks ultra premium. So up front, this is an R-Line model. Which means that we get an R-Line badge on the grille and a different front bumper. The LED headlights come standard across the board. Everything is crisp. And it has a kind of wide body appearance with the wide fenders. Plus this hood wraps over the wheels and this kind of cool arch. Now coming along the side, we see our early availability 19 inch alloys, which on later production models, you'll only get 20s. They are also directional but they look extremely good. Standard non-R-Line SEL premiums get different 19-inch alloy wheels, while non-R-Line SE and SELs get 18-inch wheels. Chrome trim is standard on all models. We also get proximity unlock. It unlocks all of the doors if you just double tap it. Power folding side mirrors, as you just saw. That is only standard on the SEL premium. Since this is the R-Line, we also get a neat little, and when I say little, I mean little, lip spoiler. Not quite as embarrassing as the GLIs, but nothing to brag about. Around back, we have actual exhaust pipes. I mean, they're still obviously exaggerated, but at least they're not that little plastic thing. On this SEL Premium, we have a power lift gate that comes standard, but it's not available on any of the other trims. The rear of the Arteon is a little bit more pinched than the front end. I still think it looks nice and cool. But if the back end was more squared off like the Jetta's, then I think it would be spooky sexy. Anyway, looks are subjective, so none of that matters. But let me know what you think of it in the comments section. Overall though, the exterior is very sleek and clean. And the interior keeps that going. The Arteon's interior Reminds you a lot of just different Volkswagen products. The infotainment system reminds me of like the Golf and the Tiguan. The shifter looks like it was pulled straight out of the Passat. Uh, the steering wheel is very familiar from other Volkswagen products too. Where it gets interesting is some of the trim and some of the speaker choices. The, the aluminum trim looks kind of like carbon fiber but with the color of aluminum. This trim comes only with the R-Line models. The regular trim has a standard aluminum look to it. SEL premium buyers get an alluring ambient lighting setup. There's plastic throughout. I wish that it was padded a little bit more where my knees are resting. Soft touch leather could be used a little bit more extensively, especially on the elbow rests. It's kind of soft, but just hard enough to get a little bit annoying on longer trips. There's also this really awkward little clock up here that just has like different colored plastic surrounding it. It just doesn't feel like it should be included and if they did include it, maybe in a different way. The Dyna audio system in this SEL is nice. It's 12 speaker, 700 watts. Standard you get eight speaker in the SE and SEL trim. And this is the SEL premium that we have here. All trims though get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard equipment along with an eight inch touchscreen. The standard touchscreen has a tablet level of image quality and responsiveness, but I'd expect this out of a car with a 47 grand price tag. What stands out to me is still that virtual cockpit gauge cluster because it's intuitive, easy to customize, looks great, and comes on SEL and SEL premium trims. Now let's talk fit and finish for a second. So the overall quality is here but just 
the material choices could be better. Some of the dials are a little shaky uh, and feel really cheap. And there, there's just a ton of plastic used on the center console area that um, just doesn't feel like it belongs in a car that starts out in the mid 30s. Hell, even loaded up like my tester is, there are still many blank switches surrounding the shifter. Now gaps on like panels and stuff, is they're all kept really tight. It's Volkswagen fit and finish in those regards. Um, but when we're talking about Audi price points, the plastics just don't feel up there. Heated 12-way adjustable front seats are standard as is leatherette upholstery. Step up to the SEL and you get Napa leather, climb to the SEL premium and you get ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, and a heated steering wheel. The seats themselves are comfortable and bolstered lightly, so it shouldn't be a problem for most people. With the front seat set to a comfortable position for me, who'm 6'3", the back seat has plenty of legroom, but in order for me to, to fit my head, I kinda have to like slouch a little bit. The, the sloped roof line of the coupe-like design really does eat into the space. But whenever I get past that, I am greeted with my own climate control system since this does have a tri-zone climate control. And then I also get heated rear seats that I can control myself back here. The Volkswagen Arteon has 27.2 cubic feet behind the rear seats. And with the rear seats folded down, you get a cavernous 55, which even with the rear seats up, still enough space to fit all my, most of my production gear and me. A power lift is standard on the SEL Premium only, and it's definitely the way to go because you also get a cool foot activated lift. In summary, when properly equipped, the interior offers quite a bit of amenities and a decent amount of space too. The materials need a little bit of work if it is to compete against other cars in the mid 40s. Still though, it excels in tech, looks, and seat comfort. Before the Arteon, we had the Volkswagen CC. Now, that really wasn't a big sales hit for Volkswagen, but it was an interesting package, especially when it stood against the Volkswagen Passat. And I think the, the new Arteon does the same thing rather well. You get dynamic chassis control standard with the Arteon. That means it has adaptive dampening so it can adjust the suspension among other things between multiple drive modes. And the cool thing about these modes is that you can actually notice the difference. So many times it's like, I'm, I feel like I'm just taking the manufacturer's word when I switch from sport to comfort or something like that, or sport to regular. But here you can feel it, especially in the steering. It really livens up when you put it into sport. I mean, by no means does it have great feedback, but it's weighted nicely and it's pretty direct and linear. Especially in sport. When you put it into comfort, the steering lightens up, the ride softens up, and this transmission is just more lazy. Road imperfections, while better masked in comfort, are not forgotten about, but the ride is never jarring and the vehicle remains composed through most of the nasty stuff. Now, the Arteon's motivation comes from a two liter turbo. Instead of the old CC's 200 horsepower two liter, this two liter makes 268 horsepower, all the way up at 5,500 RPM and it keeps that till 6,500 RPM. As far as Turks go, we get 258 from 1,950 RPM all the way up to 5,400. So broad power band there. Some, some of Volkswagen's turbos make uh, peak power at like 1,350 and 1,500. So, um, I mean, regardless, it still has plenty of low end run. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, gas mileage is a little bit disappointing at 27 miles to the gallon on the highway and 20 in the city. Except Volkswagen, ever since Dieselgate, seems to be playing these numbers safe. Still, gas mileage is probably going to be worse than an Accord 2.0T or a Camry V6. But something those cars don't have is a freaking iron block engine. So, if anyone feels like trashing their class-leading 6-year, 72,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty on a rowdy build, this engine might be okay with it. In its current state, it will send the Arteon to 60 in about six seconds, and it does it in a leisurely manner as it is paired up with a smooth ASIN eight-speed transmission. 
sport, as I said, you can get it, you can put this into sport mode, like I do have it in right now. Uh, and then you get the manual mode, except I'm not shifting and it still keeps shifting for me. It'll short shift a little bit. Um, I mean, I guess it's probably just trying to, you know, make sure you don't do any damage. But I mean, still, I should be able to choose whether I want to be an idiot or not. And it shifts when it does pretty quick. It's just a standard uh, torque converted automatic that's responsive to the paddle shifters. And understeer, a little apparent, it's all wheel drive. It is front biased, but this Aldex all-wheel drive system in the Arteon is well balanced in the corners, and the added security of all-wheel drive is nice. 4Motion comes standard on the SEL, but will run you an extra 1800 if you opt for it on SE and SEL. The steering is very tight, and still offers a little bit of communication. And body roll is also kept to a minimum, especially when you're under hard braking. It's still manages to be well balanced honestly more well balanced than the Volkswagen Jetta GLI that I drove it can hold its speed through corners without much drama and the comfort level as I mentioned before in comfort mode mm, mm. even in sport mode it's still comfortable because it's a composed vehicle and the quiet road manners, predictable steering, make it just an easy vehicle to drive around town and on back roads. As far as active safety features go, uh, you do have a lane keep assist that works in a very unobtrusive way. Only on SEL Premium, lane assist works really well on the highway, but on windy back roads, it tends to let you cross without much of any fuss, so I'll have to knock it there just a little bit. Overall, I still like it because some other systems get up your ass with constant beeping if you get a few inches too close to the center line or shoulder. Adaptive cruise control comes standard on SEL and above. All models get forward collision warning and autonomous braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot monitoring with rear traffic alert, and a backup cam bunch more parking aids that include a bird's eye camera come on the SEL Premium only. The Arteon is a very capable vehicle, uh, both in performance and in comfort. I do wish it had a little bit more uh, standard active safety tech because a lot of mid-sized vehicles that cost several thousand dollars less come standard with these things. This also offers things that many of those cars don't even have, like a true adaptive dampening. And this one also comes standard with 268 horsepower, which is nothing to scoff at. Comparing this to a car, or really anything in the in United States, is, gets a little difficult. I mean, I can try to draw comparisons to the, the Kia Stinger, but the Kia Stinger is a little bit smaller. You're not going to get as much cargo space, as much rear legroom. And we can try to look at the Toyota Avalon because it's got the size and luxury, but it doesn't have the swagger. So I'm just going to say the Arteon is very niche. It's for the Audi buyer who can't pay Audi money. Now, I'm not going to say that it's like Volkswagen's A7 or A5, because those ride on a different platform than the Arteon and are rear drive based. But I will say it's an A7 in spirit, and it costs 30 grand less. The Arteon is truly a unique package that has the ability to fulfill many needs. Would I recommend it to mid-sized buyers looking for standard features and value? No, but if you're looking for a peppy car with personality and practicality, and you don't mind paying a little extra to get it, then the Arteon should have your attention. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge shout out to Royal and Eastside for letting me use their Arteon. Royal on the East Side is a dealership in Bloomington, Indiana. If you are in the used or new market, you should check them out.